Hey guys, my name's Ethan, and today we're going to show you how to rig up a Viper Slide Kit. Alright, let's get started in the exact materials and tools you'll need to complete this project. You'll of course need a Viper Slide Kit or a similar lift system. In many cases, uh, a continuously strong lift system can take a lot of uh, advice from this video and transfer a lot of those concepts over. But today we're going to use a two-stage Viper Slide Kit. This will of course have all the parts you need minus a motor, so make sure to get the motor that meets your requirements the best. We'll also have some synthetic cable. The cable that'll come with that kit is a three quarter mil diameter, but you can get other sizes and weights available. Uh, it's often sold as uh, UHMWPE uh, as kite string. It's also known as uh, woven fishing line in a lot of cases, but make sure you get a pretty beefy option. A lot of times you going thicker can give you more strength, um, meaning you could potentially lift up more weight with your kit but at the expense of the amount of shift and tension you'll get because of the varying amount of wrap on the extend and retract side. We'll talk more about that later, but let's cover the tools you'll need. You'll need a seven millimeter wrench, a three millimeter and a 2.5 millimeter uh, Allen hex wrench, some side cutters or a knife or another way to cut that cable. And I really love these 90 or over 90 degree picks. I think they really make uh, untying knots in cable this size much easier. Now, um, on principle, a continuously strung slide like we're going to create will uh, rotate this winch pulley with a motor or a servo and move the location of this slide. Now, directly you'll be controlling the end point of the slide, but um, that will of course winch up the middle stages as well. We'll also cover how to route your return cable to pull that back and make sure that your tension is always on your line because you've always got control over exactly where the slide is. There are lots of ways to do that, but today we're going to cover the dual stringing method to have direct control with your double-sided winch. The first step in this whole process is going to be to anchor the cable to the winch. Now, there are two holes. These are about a 2.5 millimeter hole in the top of your winch pulley. You're gonna use these to tie off your string and there's a specific way that I prefer to do that. The big reason I prefer this method is it locates your uh, knot outside of the pulley, which reduces the chance that it may wrap over that, give it enough to jump over the side of the pulley, or uh, in most cases, I think it's just a little bit nicer looking. So the extend side of this slide is on the closer to the motor side, closer to me. So we're gonna wrap this on the side of the winch pulley that's closer to the sonic. We're gonna wrap the first string around this channel right here. We're gonna take the end of our cable and we will put it through I'd say the left hole, doesn't really matter at this point, um, and grab it before it goes through both. We'll then pull it out and we're gonna tie what's called a clove hitch. Now this is a, a very commonly, uh, this is a knot that's very commonly used in climbing. And the big thing here is generally a clove hitch is attached to a solid object. It, playing the role of a solid object in this case is this piece of string. So this is gonna be the object you're tying your clove hitch to. This is gonna be your working end. And we'll show a graphic up on the screen. So this can be a little bit tricky because you're tying to something flexible, but uh, is absolutely something that you can get a, hand, a hold of. And if you, for some reason, prefer a different knot, feel free to. This is my personal preference in this case. Um, I am by no means an expert on uh, knot making, but it is a fun hobby, especially. All right, so you'll notice that this knot can slide freely on um, one end of the string. So what you'll do is actually run your cable. We're gonna unspool all of it right here, find the other end, and we are going to run it from the outside of the pulley through that flange, and um, we're going to pull it all through. Um, and when you, when you get it to this point, what you'll want to do is slide your clove hitch until it is pretty darn close to the side of the winch pulley. Now this is a lot easier if you don't tighten it quite as much as I did. Um, I definitely cranked on that just a little too hard, 
but you'll want to get that up to snug with the side of your of the flange of that winch pulley and then pull this uh, and this work now the working end previously the static end tight you've now got a really secure knot that exists on the outside flange leaving you all this room in here to run your cable the next thing we're going to look at is mounting this pulley to your motor or to your motor We'll move this excess cable out of the way and we'll uh, end up cutting that here very shortly. We're gonna line up this uh, closer channel, this uh, closer channel of the motor, closer to me, with the uh, V-groove pulleys on the slide. Now, close enough here is totally fine. Uh, you're gonna have some wiggle room in where your string feeds off anyway. And we'll tighten down those pinch bolts on the Sonic Hub. We're now going to add a couple of wraps to the um, to the pulley. At this point, it doesn't matter which direction you wrap it. We'll end up wrapping the return string in the other direction. But I like to add about two wraps around that pulley just to give us some extra string to work with in the end. We're going to feed the working end of this cable through, going from top to bottom through this first bearing. We can leave a lot of this excess over here and we're going to go out to this uh, next bearing. This one's also attached to the low side channel. We're going to go up from bottom to top. We're going to pull a little bit of slack out of that. We're going to go back over to this end. This is going to be on the first uh, moving stage of the slide. Feed up from, top, from bottom to top through this bearing. Going to go back over to this side. This is again on the second stage or on the first stage, the first moving stage of the Viper slide. Thread it up from top to bottom. And then back here will be two sets of screws. These are gonna be our tie off points. Now, you wanna make sure to retract your slide all the way. This is going to be the point where you have the most um, extension cable wrapped in, uh, you know, in the system, not on the pulley at once. So you wanna make sure it's wrapped up uh, and you tie off your string Bef uh, when the slide is fully retracted. What we're going to do now is pull all of our excess cable through these bearings. This should be pretty darn smooth and it should wrap our winch tight. One thing you'll notice is I lost my two quick wraps around this winch pulley. So what I'll do is spin it a couple of times, get a, I'm going to get three wraps around the winch pulley as just some extra material to work with. That gives us a pretty good location for our loop. We're gonna tie a simple square loop here. This is one that I can just show you. Basically, we'll tie a standard knot, but instead of using a working end, uh, we're gonna use the middle of the string. This gives us a solid loop that won't change size besides the knot snugging up um, as we work with it. So we're gonna tie this to the closer of the two screws. Functionally, that doesn't matter, but I prefer tying to the closer of the screws because it gives us uh, a little easy way to increase the tension on the system. We'll get that squared away and we'll just barely snug up that screw. We don't want to clamp down on it to potentially uh, lower the amount of uh, you know structure rigidity that's in that cable. And we'll go ahead and cut it off I like to leave a little bit of working end, that's probably 12 mil, um, just in case you need to retie that knot. But we do also have our ex extra cable that is still on the uh, pulley itself. Now, we do still have a pretty good amount of cable. We certainly won't use all of this for our re uh, return cable. What I'm gonna do is actually feed out this slide by just rotating the pulley by hand. At this point, just pulling this out will work, um, but you won't feed any of that extra string in. You're just gonna create a ton of tension. So we're gonna simulate how it would work once we have it all rigged up by just extending it out by hand. And we'll hit both of our end stops. We can get a little bit of tension in it. This is kind of, we'll do a good job of pre-stretching our knots. And if you're feeling daring, um, I would definitely not recommend this on a particularly powerful motor. You could even run this motor a little bit to really give those knots um, a good, good work before uh, you set the tension for the slide system as a whole. We're now going to move on to the uh, return side of this, where um, we will tie off our string in the same manner we talked about before. 
So this will go from the outside in toward the center. In this case, the outside is toward you guys and uh, away from me. And we will tie another clove hitch. Let's see here. All right, once you have that done, snug it up against the side of your winch pulley, just like so. And we're gonna do the same thing where we feed the working end, the new working end, the previous static end of our line through the second hole, like so. Grab that end, and then we're gonna pull it all the way through to create our nice, solid tie-off point. Okay, we still have definitely way more uh, line than we need. At this step, you want to make sure that you have that your slide is all the way extended. And we are going to again give the, ourselves a couple of extra wraps just in case. At this point, you need to make sure you fed. Uh, you need to kind of keep an eye on which direction you fed your extension string. Uh, you need to wrap your return string in the other direction. So as this feeds out this feeds in. In this case, to feed the, the extend back to return the uh, slide, you'll need to be pulling this back. You'll need to be winching it in. So a nice pro tip, I think, in this case is to just kind of push on the end of your slide, try to get it to retract it a little bit. That'll show you the natural direction that will uh, feed out more extend string and it will feed in your return string. So that kind of naturally gives us the direction in this case we need to go um, to my left. We'll wrap that around a couple times and run back out to about of our end stop. At this point, we're gonna tie on our spring. This spring is going to loop around this bolt right here. We need to give it, tie it to this cable, um, but we wanna give it some tension. Um, this is not the most tensioned area of the slide. Uh, that's generally about halfway uh, and by this is uh, one of the more tensioned areas of the slide. This is one of the tighter sections. Around the middle is going to be the loosest section. So that's the place we're going to go as soon as we're done with this to make sure we've got enough tension in the system. But how we can kind of compensate for that is to preload this system a little bit. That's always smart because at some point your knots are going to stretch a little bit. They'll get tighter and you'll get, you'll find some extra string in that system. So I'm going to go probably 32 millimeters. That's somewhere around an inch and a half for our Imperial folks. And just definitely make sure in this case, I forgot to, uh, you know, wind up all the extend the slide all the way. Make sure you do that. Give yourself about 32 millimeters and grab the point of the cable that you've marked. Um, and that'll be basically the, the spring's length plus about 32 millimeters to that post. You're gonna thread the end of the cable through one end of the extension spring. And at this point, you'll wanna tie a normal square knot. It's very possible there are better knots for this use case. Um, but this is one I'm familiar with, and I bet about all of you guys are. I'm also going to cut some excess just to make this a little easier on myself to tie this knot. Since this is a knot that requires um, two working ends, or at least one working end, it's nicer to not have an insane amount of extra string. I'm sure you guys know a square knot. I'll tie one the first half just to see how close to that I get. I'm, I think I'm pretty good there. I may have a little too much tension, uh, then we will tie the second half. And I left myself a lot of extra room. That's okay with me though. You see, I did leave myself just about 32 millimeters. Let's see how much string extension that is. That's a pretty good amount of tension. You can see there's definitely somewhere around, I'd say, uh, you know, three thou between each of the coils of the spring here. And at this point, our slide system will fully work. You should be able to manipulate the uh, end of the slide and it'll always drive your motor. Your string should always stay on. What I like to do is go to about the midpoint of the slide. 
this is the point where we should have most likely about the least amount of tension. This is a great time to talk about string tension and why it shifts and why we need a tensioner. In this case, there are two different things that adjust the amount of tension in the slide. Now, the first one is that this return cable is not perfectly uh, straight in this case. It means that it's got some lift to it in the back compared to the axis of the slide. You can imagine a triangle drawn between this point right here. We're going to extend the slide back. You can imagine a triangle between this point right here, this point right here, and um, this right here. This length, of, the length of this triangle will of course change as we extend the slide out. Functionally, that means the distance between the string right here and this screw is going to change. It's going to get smaller as we extend the slide. This means that this angle is changing, which changes the amount of, of uh, cable in the loop. That means as we extend out, it's going to shift a little bit. Um, in this case, this angle is not severe enough to really warrant a pause and, a t and another V-bearing back here that could pull that straighter. It's pretty close, and our, we will need the, the spring in here anyway for the next thing I'm going to talk about, which is wrap. As we wrap um, the pulley with cable, it will build up cable on that uh, pulley. That will change the diameter, and, and because of that, the circumference of the pulley, which will change the amount of cable you feed in versus out. If you're all the way at an extreme, say right here, we've got a lot of cable on our return side and not a whole lot of cable on our extension side. This means one rotation of our motor will feed more return cable out than it will pull extension cable in. So we get this very slight change in tension in the whole system um, as we change the effective diameter of our spool system. This sounds really minor, but it does mean that we'll have the least tension and you can actually watch the spring um, in about the middle of the slide where they're pretty close to equilibrium where you're feeding just about the same amount of material in as you are out. At this point, we're still pretty good tension wise. It's not as tensioned as we, as we started. I'm sure some of my knots have tightened up a little bit, but we can still hear some notes out of our string. I think that's a great example. If you're at this point and you don't have as much tension as you need, there are a couple ways you can go. If you just need a little more tension, you can undo this first bolt right here. Take your loop and move it to this, this next screw back here. That'll give you more tension. In this case, it looks like we probably do want that. So we'll go ahead and loosen this up give us some space to loop that around. I like to be at the middle of the slide since that's where I'll have the least tension. Go back and hook it around the next screw. We'll wanna go back and tighten the first screw, of course. Move that knot out of the way. Tighten that up. And then just snug up the, the back screw. Try to make it so it doesn't fall out. And we've increased the amount of tension. Our guitar plays higher notes now. Um, and that's a pretty good way to tell. You can actually change kind of the notes, the pitch that you can make by vibrating those strings. Now, let's talk about do's and don'ts after you finish assembling your slide. First, we'll add this lock nut so that our uh, spring doesn't fall off and will be nice and solid to go use this in a competition or a general use setting. The biggest thing that I can recommend not doing with a slide is running it against its end stops. Now this system has, you know, your back end stop, which is formed by these steel plates and also by the motor mount. Um, it also has its extending end stop, which exists inside the slides. Continuing to run your motor while you're at either of these endpoints is a bad idea. Um, it can put tons of load on the, sprint, on the string, on the cable in this system and it could break that cable. In theory, always depends on how fast of a motor you've got on this baby. Now, running your um, motor in the opposite direction, fully retracting it, and then continue to run, you can see can stretch out that spring. If you do this too far or too much, you can really shorten the lifespan or severely mangle this spring. 
So I strongly recommend using the encoders in your motor to set specific positions that you want to run between. Um, this is great in a lot of cases because you probably don't need exactly this much stroke. You probably have some different requirements. So maybe you need to go directly here. Maybe you do need all the stroke, but you want to undershoot that just slightly so you're not putting undue pressure on the, the system or the motor. Another thing that you want to keep in mind with when you're working with slides in general uh, is, you know, your loading direction. Don't put too much load cantilevering them or trying to get them to twist off. Not a great idea. And if you have a, a special situation where you need a lot of tension on them, um, you may look at doubling up those slides. This is meant as a guide specifically for this slide, but like I mentioned before, I do think a lot of these concepts will transfer over. If you've got questions on the Viper slide kit or any parts that we sell over at GoBuilda, make sure to shoot us an email over to tech at gobuilda.com. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.